thanks for coming back. So in my last video, I read a set of my affirmations to you and made a point to say that I am not trying to convince anyone of anything. You are not obligated to believe me at all, but you can if you want to. I'm just trying to be obedient and tell my story. However, for all of you who are believers and even the skeptics, today I am asking everyone to join me in praying for my future husband. Why? Because God has revealed to me over the years that he is far from God. And if you watched my previous video, you might have picked up on that in the affirmations that I read. To further illustrate this concept, I pulled some selections from my other affirmations, and I will read them to you today. Then I will pray at the end of the video, and you can pray along with me. But remember, I'm not saying his name out of respect for him, which is hard because God says his name a lot. So, these are some selections from my affirmations, which I am naming what to pray for my future husband. Mostly it's just God's words to me. And note, there will be some repeats. So, you ready? Let's go! What to pray for my future husband. I do need to worry about and pray for his relationship with God because God really did say, quote, he can't help you as your, as your husband until he's under God's direction and gets his thoughts lined up with God's thoughts. November 21st, 2002. You've got to remember, he's not just rejecting you, he's rejecting me slash God too. This is more than you and him and how you relate to each other. This is a spiritual warfare relationship. March 21st, 2010. He isn't actually mad at me. He's mad at himself and God. It's all about him and God. And I remind him of his relationship with God. He is not happy because he's not in God's will. October 27, 2009. If I am truly living under God, God's direction, and by God's grace, and I acknowledge that and am proud of it, then for him to make fun of it or mock it or put it down in any way shows that he is in more spiritual trouble than I thought. August 12, 2007. His rebellion and rejection of you was about his relationship with God. It really wasn't about you. May 26, 2010. It, him not talking to you, slash your time apart, is about his relationship with God. November 7th, 2009. He's not rejecting you, he's rejecting God. February 25th, 2006. You ever think all this has happened for him to believe in God? Remember, the more he resists, the more glory God will get when we are put together by God. February 15, 2006. So pray for him and his relationship with God and everything will fall into place. February 24, 2003 and July 16, 2016. He doesn't associate relationships with serving God. He doesn't serve God with his relationships. That's what you wanted. That's what God wants. This relationship you want with this other guy is a relationship based on feelings. Like his relationships, not on serving God. April 13, 2003. I do not have to be afraid of my extreme faith on Facebook driving him away. Because God really did say, quote, If it does, then he's not the man I need him to be for you. If he is the man I need him to be, 
then he will be encouraged, inspired, and relieved, and happy to see that you are exactly as God described and as he remembers. You are that pillar of salt that shines like a beacon in a dark world. And there is nothing wrong with that. If he is the man that he should be for you, he will be pleased to see that in you. Do not be ashamed of your faith, and he will not be ashamed of his. Remember the dream. If you, Amanda, take a stand, then he has no choice but to take a stand with you. Stand firm. Don't waffle. You can do it. March 26, 2010. He likes that you're the same. The same as before. The same as high school. He likes how strong and unwavering you are in your faith. May 26, 2010. The most important the most important thing he sees in you is how much or how closely you follow God. That is why he loves you. January 24, 2010. He will love you because you really are following God and he's never seen that before. January 13, 2010. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe. Philippians 2, verse 14 and 15. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. Ephesians 6, verse 7. Husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He will love... He who loves his wife loves himself. Ephesians 5 verse 28 Stand firm then. Ephesians 6 verse 14 If he doesn't like me for who I am and my faith and my commitment to God, then he isn't the guy for me. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 and 14 In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. I will no longer wonder, why did he reject me? Because God has revealed to me, he never rejected me, he rejected God, and God's will, and God's best for him. And I just so happen to be God's best for him. Because God already told me, quote, He did not reject you because of your face. He actually thinks you're quite a beautiful girl, and you have grown into a beautiful woman. June 1st, 2010. You've got to remember, he's not just rejecting you. He's rejecting me slash God, too. This is more than you and him and how you relate to each other. This is a spiritual warfare relationship. March 21st, 2010. He's not rejecting you. He's rejecting God. February 25th, 2006. It's up to him and God to make this relationship work. You've done all you can do. Pray for him. It's all up to him. You are God's best for him. God's been molding you into the best woman he could ever think of. It's just if he wants God's best. Pray for him. God could have put you and him together last year, but instead, bad things happened. Jesus understands your frustration when no one else does. But God's going to do a miracle, an even bigger miracle than expected. You and him are going to be a great witness for God. If he wants what God wants, God's best, then he'll definitely want you. November 3rd, 2002. He doesn't know what's best for him. November 24th, 2005. God told me he loves me and he rejected me because of his relationship with God, not me, my personality, or my looks. The only thing he would not like about me is how I remind him of his relationship with God. When he is not right with God, which is exactly what God said 
he loves about me now, now that he is right with God. July 27, 2010. I don't think he's ever been right with God. December 5th, 2017. God is in control. God will let you make your own decisions, but will pull you back if you stray too far. It is God who is going to put me and him together, not him choosing me. God is the God of circumstances. God told me, if he wants God's will, he will automatically want me because I am part of God's will for his life. January 5, 2006 Just as passionately as he rejected you is how passionately he'll love you. When he submits, God will lead him to me. October 16, 2009 When I asked, why is he mad at me all the time? What have I done to him? God answered, you really haven't done anything to him. The devil just wants to keep him mad and you upset. God is in control. He's got everything worked out already. Everything's going to be all right. October 28, 2002. If he wants what God wants, he'd want you. Why are you still worried? So why do I worry? God knows what I need. October 30th, 2002. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Luke 10, verse 16. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness. And light dwells with him. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. I will no longer wonder, why doesn't he talk to me? Because God has revealed to me, God won't let him come to me without going through him first. He can't get to me without going through God first. God won't let him come to me filled with anger, bitterness, resentment, and pain. In other words, he can't go around God and try to talk to me with vicious intent. When he comes to me, he will be at peace and in God's will, because God will be guiding him to me, just like God's guiding me to him. December 23rd, 2006. Getting it right is the only way to move on to the next steps. Do pray for him. Pray for yourself. February 3rd, 2003. God assured me that if I make all the effort to change and become the strong woman of God that I know I should be, would God really put me with someone who wasn't equally devoted to God and passionate and on fire? The answer is no. It's just that God has told me who the man is who is going to be passionate and on fire for God with me already. And it just happens to be him. The only reason why I doubt, really, is because I know the way he used to be. And it's hard for me to think of him not like that. That's why I have to change my attitude toward him. I need to stop thinking and praying as if he's not going to choose God. I need to think that he is. Because he is. January 2nd, 2006. The end. Now that you've heard what God has said to me about him, let's pray for him together. God, thank you for my future husband that you've promised to bring to me. Thank you that we can join together right now and pray for him. Thank you that you promised to be in our midst when two or three are gathered in your name. So we are coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. 
on behalf of my future husband. We lift him up to you right now. God, I pray if he is still far from you, that you will provide him with every opportunity to come back to you. If he has yet to receive the free gift of salvation through Christ, I pray he will do so right now in Jesus' name. I pray he will repent of all of his sins and turn and go in the opposite direction. May he surrender his life to you right now and put his trust in you to save him from eternity in hell. In Jesus' name. May today be the day that he starts aggressively pursuing your will for his life. And may we all see the evidence of this change within him and his actions day by day. In Jesus' name. God, thank you for speaking to me many, many times over the years and for revealing the hidden things in this man's heart so that I can pray for him better. And thank you, God, for allowing me the opportunity to share my story with the masses and allowing them the opportunity to join me in praying with him. I pray you will guide him to me when the time is right, and may you receive all the glory from our reconciliation. In Jesus' name, God, thank you for all those who are praying with me right now. God, bless them and their lives, too. And may your will be done in every situation. In Jesus' name, amen. We did it! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and praying with me. I can't wait to come back next time with him beside me. Hi! See you then!